now I am. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I have I have Javon's installation on, so maybe I should turn the, that that sound off. <laughs> I'll be right back, everybody. Okay, well, we, we've got some people coming in, so why don't we just get started? This is rather a, a, a friendly conversation, <laughs> for lack of better words. Um, hello, good evening. My name is Frederick Jenka. I'm the executive director of the Carolyn Glass of Bailey Foundation. This is the second um, of two virtual events um, around the exhibition Javon C. Speller Sounds for Survival, which uh, will close tomorrow in Ojai. So if you're in the neighborhood, um, please, please make sure to come by or, or get in touch and um, we can find a time for you to come by. Um, our last program um, last week, actually maybe it's even been two weeks ago, I can't have lost track of time, but it's also, it's on our, um, our YouTube channel. So you can rewatch that. I enjoyed rewatching it recently um, in preparation for this evening. And um, so we have two fabulous guests with us this evening. We have Jovan C. Speller herself um, in the virtual space and um, uh, Diani Whitehawk, who uh, received the 2020 Carolyn Vassa Bailey Foundation Art Prize and um, who is quite busy. <laughs> and so we're grateful for her to be here with us. <laughs> and, um, and really, I just wanna preface this conversation with um, just that, you know, they're both incredibly inspiring artists that we've committed to supporting in their careers. And um, I know they have lots of um, history, her story, her story together. And that, um, you know, they both have worn multiple hats and continue to wear multiple hats. And, you know, I see you both as catalysts, as curators, as organizers, as activists. Um, you know, you, you, you speak and care for people, which I think is something that is incredibly important to me personally, and I'm grateful for that work that you do. Um, and so, yeah, so this evening is going to be rather casual. Um, we're going to, you know, let um, Jovan and Diani speak and connect and share, and um, I'll probably interject a little bit here and there. Um, and then we'll take some time at the end for questions. So. Um, back to housekeeping, we have the Q&A function going, um, closed captions are running. Um, if you have any, um, any needs that are not being met, please do um, drop us a chat or, or in the Q&A and, and we'll do our best to uh, accommodate that. And um, so yeah, so I think, you know, without further ado, um, let's, let's bring our panelists up and, um, you know, Jovan, I think, um, you know, this is kind of like the the eve of closing, right? It's a little, it's a little, um, it's a little bittersweet. Um, we've had such a incredible time here with your um, your work in the space and um, and sort of leading so many conversations we've been having here, just amongst visitors and and guests. Um, so yeah, so your it's your platform. Let's um, let's get into this. Sure. Um... Well, uh, I guess I'll start by getting, giving just a little bit of additional context as um, to what's being presented right now in the gallery space. If any of you are there in town and available to go, or if you, you know, follow any of our Instagrams and you know, see images and things like that. Um, so Sounds for Survival was kind of turned into this iterative installation. Um, so this is the second time I've done a version of Sounds for Survival. And it really was um, something that was brought about by this like necessity to um, center, um, Black voices, images of Blackness, um, as well as honor, ancestry, and um, kind of like imagine into the future um, and create spaces of healing and respite 
So um, actually what's really cool, and I totally forgot until this very moment is that Diani saw the first um, uh, iteration of Sounds for Survival, right? In um, a small gallery space in, um, in St. Paul, the new studio gallery. Um, so yeah, I totally forgot about that. I might like bring you into the conversation earlier than I had anticipated. But um, so yeah, the I think that the first the first iteration was really centering like calling to the ancestors um, to like come into being and create spaces of healing, right? Like there's a lot happening in Minneapolis um, right now, uh, even now. And there was a lot happening when I first started creating this work. Um, a lot of, you know, violence against black bodies. Um, and, uh, and so I was really interested in like, what does it look like to create spaces where we can come together um, rather than constantly reflect what's happening that we don't really have control over. Like, I think that there are, um, I was really even thinking about like, how do you center the activists, the people who are out there doing the work? Like, how do you create spaces for them to heal as well as the community at large? So those were the kind of things that were in my mind when I was creating the first body of work. And then the second body of work became a little bit more personal. Um, so the work, the installation at, um, in Ojai is really about my family's history and directly speaking to um, sites of um, survival in, um, in my family's history, as well as um, sounds that are important culturally um, to kind of like tie those spirits together and create a space of healing. Um, so I hope that you enjoy it. Um, the work is photography and mixed media. Um, and some installation pieces, but yeah, I hope you get to go see it. So Gianni, I guess I'm gonna make you talk about, I know Freddie probably have questions too, but I'm gonna make you talk about that installation. Like yes. it was it was so cool that you came out to, to, to see it because it was like, you know, like the throes of COVID we were, it was the first thing that I had done you know, in the, in the, during the pandemic and we we're trying to create safe spaces to still gather and enjoy the things that everybody was creating. So I remember that being quite a moment, but it was, it was really cool that you were able to come out and support. I, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, and <clears throat> I was so, it was a really great installation. It was really a small space and you had um, the support for that exhibition came through what, um, what was the, award that can you talk a little bit about that there wasn't first? no that was it the was. thing no that was that was um um I was I can't remember who recommended me but it was a three-person um exhibition um in the okay. new studio okay. gallery yeah and so there wasn't you know like financial support but it was a space to um uh experiment you know yeah. and kind of yeah. like you know create something new. And that's kind of how I saw that installation is like almost like the pilot version of what I really wanted to execute. Yeah. So I guess there's a few things that come to mind. Um, one, I always tell people I'm a, a really bad arts participant in the fact that um, I know, I know it's terrible, um, but I don't get out much. And, but you and I have talked about this, like that's part of the, the, challenge of of being we, one of the topics we wanted to talk about tonight is you know the negotiations of being a parent and um an artist and you know juggling all of the things you know being um Jovan and I I know are, are both very closely tied to our families as well like the, in extended family as well and it's just um I get to work I work a lot I go home you know, and, and every once in a while I get out and then that was lessened even more so during the pandemic. Um, but I remember really wanting to get to that installation. Uh, we went and played, I remember we went and played a uh, game of traditional lacrosse that day. So I was outside. I apologized to Jovan as, as soon as I showed up. So I was like, I am not dressed for an exhibition, um, <laughs> like, but I'm here and I want to see it. And I'm so glad I made it because it was a really um moving installation so one of the you know you mentioned that it's mixed media um and installation and um photography but the sound piece it is really um 
prominent and, and really important in this work and really moving. So for those of you that are in the Ojai area, if you can get to see it for this last day, um, it's, it's, it's work that you have to experience. Um, and I think that that's what you delivered in that installation was an immersive experience. Um, and I just remember standing in there with you. Um, <clears throat> I got the chills, which is an, an indicator, you know, a bodily indicator that it's um, a success for me. It's a bodily indicator that it's a really successful work and that it's it's doing its job because I I myself strive to make work that our body registers just as much as our mind registers. For me, I feel like the best work is is a balance of those things. It's a balance of of that bodily like physical recognition at the same time as the cognitive recognition or that they're they're in play with one another. Um, a lot of work sometimes focuses really strongly on the cognitive and 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 that's all fine and well. But for me, if it's it's um, the entire experience, right? Like all parts of our being are, are registering this experience. And, and I felt that in, in your installation. And I just remember standing there with you and telling you that I can see it bigger, you know, that like I could really see this installation being um, continued to be explored and continued to be pushed because it's it was just a really strong foundation that you had built in that space. Um, so I'm really excited that you got to see it or that you got to um, continue that exploration of this piece. And I'm guessing um, that it might just be the beginning of, of more. Um, and I get to run out there and see it for its last day. So I can't wait to see it in person I'm and so experience excited. it in the second iteration. There you yeah. go. So I have to say, like I had, I mentioned this before this call started, but just for everybody who's in the virtual room, mm -hmm. like I cannot handle praise from Diani. I cannot handle like <laughs> I. There are there. I do. I'm one of those people. I do not care. Like I don't. You know, I make my work because it comes from like the place in which I need to make something, right? And um, yes, I'm vulnerable and. Um, you know, uh, uh, nervous, you know, about m making especially very personal work public, but, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I rarely uh, stress about how, how things will be received. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> an exception to that is Dion. Um, <laughs> And I really can't think of many other exceptions. There's like, there's like one other person, I'm not even gonna drop that name, but like there's a couple of people, you know, but Diani is one of those people. And so I will just say that like, Diani is like an artist artist. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Diani has work in, Whit in the Whitney that's coming up, the Whitney Biennial that's coming up, like all of the museums on earth, you know, like I think that it's important <laughs> that you plug the 12,000 exhibitions that you have opening in the next few months. Um, but like when Diani and I started, it was like, you know, I was really in the, at this place of making this transition from um, working primarily as a curator into like really digging into my artistry because I went to school and like studied to be an artist. I've always wanted to be an artist, but sometimes you can't see that path very clearly. And mm -hmm. I know that Diani has, has a history as a curator as well. And um, uh, as you know, I was, a part of this curatorial programming at the Walker. Um, and uh, I think it's called MN Artists Create or MSR, MN Artists Presents, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's mm -hmm. about like artist led curatorial projects. And so I applied for that opportunity and, um, and uh, you know, was happy to be able to execute some ideas. And so I reached out to Diani and I was like, hey, um, this thing's coming up in like four months. Do you wanna be a part of it? And um, you were working on a very serious body of work that was very time consuming. And it could have been a no, but you said yes. And that was kind of like the beginning of our relationship. I feel like that was like the very beginning of 2018 and I was immensely pregnant with my first baby, right? Uh, um, yep. 
Yeah, <clears throat> but um, but so that that's how our collaborations began, and it was just like an instant connection. Um, there were so many things that we were um, exploring that overlapped related to like the history of land, land legacy, um, ancestry, um, um, language, right? Like there was just, a, there was a lot. And we, we also recognized this need for conversation between, um, between native and black community. Um, mm -hmm. And we wanted to like find a place to start, you know, mm -hmm. like, it, there's so much to talk about, where do we start? So not only did we collaborate um, on that project, but we made a, we made a, we made a film together. <laughs> we both were interested in, right? Like in making film. And so we made a film together and interviewed our mamas and included our mama's voices and imagery of our babies, you know, right? That was, yeah, I just wanted to give some context into, you know, the history of our collaboration and also the fact that I cannot handle criticism <laughs> and critique from you because I admire the work that you do so much. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. We, you know, uh, I'll, I'll um, share a little bit more about our, our artistry friend love story. Um, what it, what was the panel that we first spoke on together? Oh my what gosh. Was Yes, the, that was into into that into publication into Minneapolis or something like that into MPLS or MSP or something I can't remember what it was. So we, we shared a panelist space at um the um Minneapolis Loft. for Book Arts the Artist Loft. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Literary Center. Um, and you know sometimes you are lucky enough to come across people where immediately you meet them and you're like that person we can be friends like we're getting you know this is just you kind of just recognize that in a person and i remember recognizing that in you and your sister when we met you know and i just remember being like yep th these ones um <laughs> they're, they're good ones um and then yeah so when you reached out about uh the collaboration for the walker it was a totally different project you know we both come from um both practicing artists and curatorial backgrounds, but that was a different kind of collaboration that pushed us in really new directions. And I think that, um, I don't know that we have the time to like get into the depths of that tonight, but I get, I think what is interesting about it that is related to tonight is it seems to have been this kind of continuous ongoing snowball that 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 leads up to this evening even where it pushed like the work that we decided to go into that night that you and I keep talking about we want to return to um pushed us both in our own independent practices right and now we're doing things that when we sat together and and talked and dreamed about the work that we would do for that one singular event that one night um it's really prompted and and led a continuous thread into what we're doing independently today, which I think is really beautiful. Absolutely. And then um, then we get to keep talking on thing, you know, and, and conversations like tonight. Um, there's a good question in the chat room though. Did oh, you see it? I didn't. Oh. Do you want me to read it to you? Oh my gosh. Hi, Katie Skelly. Hi, Jahan. <laughs> okay, it says, congratulations on the exhibition. I'm planning to see it tomorrow. No way, cool, thank you. Um, could you share a bit about the process of creating the sound installation? Um, yeah, actually, that was really that was really awesome. Um, so, and I sound installation has become this like part of my art making practice that um, I have anxiety about because I have zero like technical training, right? but um, both my parents are musicians. And so I'm just like, I embody sound, right? Like a, I'm just gonna, let's just call that, give me some confidence to like, just be brave and make the work. Um, so the sound installation is um, a woman singing Yama Yase Su. And um, it also incorporates sounds of uh, like a baby crying, cooing, um, there's sounds of the ocean, um, honoring Yamaya. There are um, 
kind of like distant whale calls, what ha which has to do with my history as well. Um, and I had a blast like reaching out to um, a singer and other kind of like sound artists and musicians to like record and I didn't necessarily have the right equipment, the right mics or whatever, but I found, you know, um, these, uh, call these spaces, um, quiet soundproof spaces at collaborative workspaces and things like that. And um, it was just really beautiful. So like the baby, for example, that's in, that you hear in, um, in the sound installation is the, the woman who's singing, that's her son, right? She was nursing while she was singing. And so, you know, there's just like moments like that that make the work even more important to me, that make that make me feel like it it really is kind of like um, it's like if if she, like the person who's singing is in the process of providing like nourishment, is nurturing, is like, you know, uh, soothing and calming, you know, a life. And that's what the entire installation is supposed to be about too. So there's something about the process of, you know, collecting the sounds that also felt very important to and in alignment with um, the piece conceptually. Um, so, so, I mean, really, I'm like complete amateur, but I did, you know, like I edited the, the sounds together. Um, what am I using here? I can't remember. Audible, what did I download? Anyway, some some free software <laughs> to cut things together. It's the Audible is where we listen to the it's books. It's not Audible the books. It's the other <laughs> audio one. I'm like like going through like my apps right now. Like I know what, <laughs> what they use. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, jo Jovan, Jovan, did you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. There oh, you go, oh, Audacity. Oh, Thank you. Sorry. Yes, Kelly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. Um. <clears throat> So, okay, for folks that may not know, like Jovan has predominantly identified as a photographer, right? I have predominantly identified, we're talking in our artist career, right? <laughs> a, a painter, I'm a, you know, predominantly a painter and mixed media artist. I'm actually in Charleston, South Carolina right now because I just went to the closing of my own exhibition here, which is a video and sound installation and a photography installation. And you're closing your show now that is uh, <clears throat> sound and, and photo and, and mixed, media. mixed media installation. So my question is, before we did the braids video together, mm -hmm. had you done any sound installation oh, or video no. installation before that? No, okay. it only so existed in my head. Um, yeah. <laughs> that I, I, I believe <laughs> our bravery together to decide to play and do something that was totally outside of the realm for both of us is what opened that door for us to continue to be able to be like, now we're going to, you know, like, oh, we can do this. We can experiment with this. Cause it was, <clears throat> and it was all through us trying to figure out how do we make something um, that is impactful for, so the, the, the night, the event that Jovan curated that we're keep referencing was a one night installation, like a museum takeover for a single night, right? And <clears throat> Jovan's curatorial task was to fill all the public spaces in the museum for that singular night. And when her and I decided to, to collaborate on, on this event, her as a photographer and me as a painter, we were like, well, we can't move in a bunch of paintings and photos for Where a single put, night. Wh which wall? We don't Hang have access to no like wall. <laughs> yeah. so, so we had to think outside of, of our usual practices and we ended up collaborating with other artists, uh, choreographers and, and dancers. And then, you know, we decided to collaborate on this video piece together that Jovan referenced uh, titled Braids because we were trying to figure out, uh, we, we knew that we wanted to address this idea of, of um, like how, how do we start to break down um, divides between our cultures that are really symptomatic of colonization? Like how, you know, the, our histories are, are in a completely inextricably 
intertwined. Like we, but they're not taught that way. They're not spoken about that way. You know, there's, there's deep divisions, you know, so how do we start to speak to our own communities to, to um, encourage this cross-cultural uh, learning and, and nurturing. And, and so we, we created this braids video speak, you know, cause braids was that like the visual signifier for us, you know, that something that is uh, embedded in our cultural practices, distinct, you know, distinctly embedded in our, our cultural practices, you know, native people can speak to the practices of, of braiding and, and how personal it is. Uh, Black folks can do the same. So there are these, these, you know, independent histories, but there's, you know, we can speak to the, um, our intersections through that singular concept, right? And it was really cool because we interviewed our moms separately, asked them the same set of questions, and even, we didn't even try, and you you can listen to both of those, and you hear those histories, you know, the, the histories of, of this nation being responded to through this totally organic form of questioning for our moms that did not hear each other's answers or weren't even, you know, there was no interaction between our moms. But it, so it came out really beautifully, really naturally. But now here you are doing this sound installation and I just got back from my sound and video installation and it's just, it's, so anyways, yay to, to <laughs> experiment together. Maybe, you know, doing that together is something that, um, helped push us forward in our practices into to new areas of exploration. Yeah, and hopefully there's more collaboration to come. I don't know if you re remember, Diani, because you're doing a thousand things right now, but I, I'm i hoping to, uh, to collaborate um, with Diani on um, a, another sound piece for the, the St. Paul Triennial, which is not a thing yet, but it, it's it's oh, a new yeah. endeavor, right? Um, so that's like in the ideation fundraising stage of things, you know, but um, that will really explore, it, it's kind of um, inspired by sounds of survival, but it really explores like healing sounds culturally, like across cultures and creating um, a sound installation that would be installed outdoors, um, you know, kind of like in a busy city space that could um, that could offer you know those again those spaces of healing and respite, but that also yeah. you know speak to um, the cultural significance of language and certain sounds and songs and the history of those things as well. So hope like you know stay tuned. Hopefully that 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 comes through in the next couple of years. Yeah, or yes. year. I don't know. Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna jump in here. Can you hear me? Yes. video down. Um, so Jovan, you mentioned, you know, when you're describing the sound piece about the whale song kind of off in the distance, and it reminded me of your last time out in California, um, and we went to the beach and you were taking photographs of the water for a, um, a lenticular print that um, I've seen, I've seen a little video of. Um, but it made it reminded me that you know you spent quite a, a a chunk of your early formative years in California, and you know mm -hmm. I like to say that Californians kind of find a way back <laughs> somehow. <laughs> it's a special place, and and I just wonder you know if there was something that you would want to share. Obviously, on this platform, I'm sure you want to share something more personal, but but with Diani, you know, because this is kind of also in some ways, like the land you know, kind of formatively, right? Kind of deep in the recesses there, um, you know, your land in some way, you know, like of, of what you know. And, and I just wonder, is there this, you know, with Diani coming out here, I just wonder if there isn't something about, about this space that you might want to share with her. Yeah, there's something really magical Jan, have you been to Ojai or that part of California ever? No? Okay, you're just in for a treat, my dear. But um, there's something really magical, spiritual, something like all-encompassing, something that just surrounds you because there's the Pacific and the mountain, like there's like the ocean and the mountains and it just like holds you, you know? And there's something about um, that... 
um, landscape that feels like home. Um, and uh, so that, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles, but it's the same, it's the same terrain, right? It's, you know, um, it's salty seawater and it's mountains. Um, and I will say that, you know, like when I was a kid and on vacations, like we never went to the beach in season. I'm not trying to call my mama out, but I really don't think she was trying to go there. Like when people were in skimpy things, you know, I think like, <laughs> she was just like, we're not doing that. Um, so like all of the pictures of us on the beach where it's like California fall. So we're still in shorts, but we have like windbreakers on, you know, <laughs> and like socks sneakers, you know, but at the beach. So like, there's no images of like us in bathing suits at the beach. We would always go in the off season. Um, uh, so actually, I don't know what the weather's like there now, but you know, that might be interesting. Um, but we would go to, we would go to the mountains and I don't know why we would go to Big Bear Mountain. I don't know why we would go. I have, and Diani knows this, I have no um, like, ability to like participate in snow winter activities and I remember going to <laughs> Big Bear Mountain and it like uh, that was our experience with snow um you know in, until we moved to the east coast but um I I have no idea why we did that like nobody liked to be cold I did, I'm in Minnesota now and like there's four feet of snow in my backyard but um no exaggeration um but anyway I think that that it would be really it's something really really healing there's something really healing about that about that terrain and um every time i go one of the things that i want to do is like collect some of the seawater and bring it back with me there's something about that that needs to like exist on my altar i don't know what that is i'm going to dig into it but i don't know i'd be interested in hearing how you connect with it as well when you're there well actually um something that you said you said it feels like the landscape holds you mm -hmm. And um, I'm paraphrasing here, but I can find the video. Um, the Ojai Music Festival had a, um, a local Chumash elder, um, I believe her first name is Julie. I, I can't um, remember her full name right now, but they've got some great YouTube videos of her um, doing some of the, singing some of the songs that she remembers and um, telling some of the kind of cosmologies and origin stories of, um, of her people. and one of the and again i'm paraphrasing here but one of the things is that the mountains were the sort of elder ancestors they they laid down and became the mountains and so um there are these formations like it's called i mean it's again it's perhaps it's, i don't know how correct it is to refer to it as this but um people in ojai call chief's peak and there's like, it looks like a profile. It looks like somebody's laying down. It's very sort of recognizable, but I drive, you know, almost daily between Santa Barbara and Ojai. So I'm looking at the landscape a lot. And it's just something that I was even thinking about today. I think just like looking at these ridge lines and trying to find like faces or finding faces and not necessarily, you know, thinking about it, but thinking of other things. Um, and I just have to say, when you said that just now, it, it sort of made, made so, oh yeah, there you go. Tressa just dropped it in. Julie um, Tumame, yeah. Um, thank you, Tressa. Um, and so just, yeah, I just, it, I, I had never thought about it that way, but I do think there is something about this space that's, that is incredibly sacred. It is this space of holding. Um, and then if you think about from this like geological standpoint, um, you know, this land was, was sort of like, you know, kind of, for lack of better words, ripped off of what is now Mexico, kind of slammed up against, you know, pivoted and slammed up against, um, you know, the rest of what is North America, right? And so it is, you know, the, his the history is, or at least that's the Western science, you know, explanation for it, right? But um, but yeah, I don't know. There's, I, I love that you pointed that out. So so thank you, and I'll be intrigued to see what Diani thinks when she's um, nestled in the in the foothills on her on her time here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I've been um, to different areas in California, and my husband's my husband's family is um, he's uh, Quetzan, so they're right on the 
uh, Arizona, California, four miles above the Mexico border. So I've spent a lot of time <clears throat> down that way. And I've been to San Francisco and, and but I've, I've never been, I haven't been to LA yet. And I've not, so I've not been to Ohio. So I'm really, I mean, I know that the geography across the stretch of California is, you know, extremely varied and, um, when is Diani coming? Look forward. I'll be there in uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going from South Carolina to um, to LA, so we'll have a very long flight tomorrow. Um, but we'll be out at the gallery in a couple days, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm just I'm really looking forward to seeing it, and um, it's I you know I just I understand what you're talking about, Jovan. I mean that's it's the way that I feel when I'm in like be, the areas between Minnesota and the plains are they like, I know my body identifies that as home. Like I, I, <clears throat> I know that feeling that, that there's just a, a registration that is understood at a different level in, in certain places where you're, you're, you're body recognizes the land, you know, and, and there's something that's, that's familiar and extremely comfortable, you know, and, um, but I also like the celebration that is the ocean, man, I just, when you said you want to package that and bring it home, like I get that too. <laughs> I really do. Um, and I'm not like ocean in any way, <laughs> shape or form. I've not been raised by it. Um, I guess my, my, my dad's folks would have crossed the ocean to get here. You know, his people are, are German and Welsh, so who knows, but, um, I've not lived by it, but there's something, I mean, it's just so, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just gotta be the connection to that too. It's a beautiful feeling. Something that we talked about in the last um, panel, Jovan was around around the land. You know, there were sort of three things kind of intersecting the 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 geology um, of space, a, a place, I guess I think is how we called it, um, the ancestral archive, and then the um, the unknowing, and sort of how those three things kind of come together and they come together in your installation here. Um, but I think in this conversation right now, I think those things are starting to come together too. So um, I'm just wondering if you know, there are any elements there that, that Diana, you might like to kind of chime in on or um, Jovan, if you've thought further about some of those things since our last conversation that you might wanna you know, continue, continue speaking to. I don't mind, yeah. I was gonna say, I don't know that I'll be able to speak to this very eloquently yet, just because it's just starting to come together in my thoughts as we've been talking. But one thing that I really appreciate, I mean, I touched on the fact that we're both, you know, experimenting in new areas with um, installation and sound and all of that. But what I really appreciate is that both of our work without us talking about it. I mean, these things have been developed, you know, Javon's um, developing her own work. I'm developing my own work or friends. We touch base from time to time, but we've not been like in conversation with one another while we're developing these pieces. Um, but we're both creating work that is speaking very specifically to um, cultural lineage, to ancestral lineage, both personal, but also as it's related to this land base um, and the complex history of this land base and our, our, our ties to that. And then they also both speak to loss throughout that history um, and uh, the reality of the strength of, of those connections as well, which is, um, really beautiful and fascinating to me. And I feel like we have to have another talk about that later, um, <laughs> more in depth talk about the way that these, this installation work that we're both doing, um, 
they're really like conceptually very similar, I feel like. Um, so, so the piece, I, I haven't talked about that and I won't go too far into it, but the work that I've is up in a couple exhibitions right now, the video installation is uh, titled Listen and it's on indigenous languages. And so we are a, a friend of mine, Rizal Benali, who's a uh, Diné and Lakota um, filmmaker, her and I have been traveling and recording uh, indigenous speakers. They're all women um, speaking their languages on their homelands uh, and then provide and then creating these installations where folks have an opportunity to be introduced to the languages of this land base. Um, and then the museum didactics talk about the fact that like as Americans, you know, like uh, average adults, you know, we can probably each identify upwards of 20 plus languages just by sound. Um, but if you go down the list and you think about all those languages, if you sat in a cafe or walked down a sidewalk and thought, you know, well, oh, that's Italian, that's German, that's Spanish, that's, you know, it's a long list when we really think about how many languages we can identify and pick up. And then depending on where you live, um, even the most um, recent immigrant um, immigrant populations or refugee populations, we start to become familiarized with with the sounds of the most recent folks to to come and live here as well. So, like in the Twin Cities, you you hear Hmong regularly or Somali regularly, and so and depending on where you're at, you know we're exposed to to languages, and and we we start to understand even if we don't know a single word, we know what language is being spoken. Conversely, if you ask people, if you introduce them to um, indigenous languages from this land base, most folks would be hard pressed to identify one or two, um, unless they are native people or have been, um, had really direct connections with uh, native communities. And so it gives people an opportunity to tour a gallery space and be introduced to a, a small sampling of the languages from this land base and have a moment, hopefully, of epiphany to think about how profound it is that most folks have probably not heard these languages. And moreover, it's most likely never crossed their minds that they don't know what the languages from here actually sound like. Um, and so it's, it, to your point, Freddie, this, this not knowing, right? This idea of, you know, and, and then even within native communities, we're not all language speakers. Um, and so, and then there's a tremendous amount of disconnect even between nations because of colonization as well. So like, you know, even, we don't all know each other's languages either, you know? And so for Rizal and I, it's this beautiful learning as well as we go and film, um, being introduced to languages and, and the histories of different areas. Rizal, between Rizal and myself, we have connections all over, the, all over the country, but here in South Carolina, they commissioned us to do a new video and her and I didn't have any connections uh, down here. And so we, um, had to get that connection through the um, gal the museum here. Um, and we sat with a woman, she's Kataba, who's the language speaker that we um, worked with. Her name's Becky Garris. But learning about the history of, um, of their tribe and, and their efforts for language continuity, um, it really opened our eyes because it, geographically, there's so um, it's so far from her and I both uh, Lakota, so Plains, and then she's also Diné, so, you know, farther southwest. Um, the, even just the recognition of like the tribes on the coast here on the East Coast were the ones that were hit first, right? So like the amount, like the, the, the impact of colonization on the, on the coasts because of, you know, being hit first and then the gold rush and um, missions and all that, like it's, you know, the impacts are tremendous to tribes on the coasts. And so um, language continuity is, is a lot more challenging out this way. So that, that not knowing is, is a huge part of, of that conversation as well. So even, you know, 
being here on on the lands that we're indigenous to there's a tremendous amount of of unknowing and connection and reconnection that's happening within our own communities and all of that is is um the result of of colonization right and the questions that you're dealing with jovan in your work again that's a, like this histories are completely intertwined we can't have the conversations that are embedded in this work that we're doing without speaking to the reality of of the causes of why and how right yeah definitely and i think that you know um just to also speak to freddie's question like those things that came up last time i remember um this the concept of like the unknowing uh or uh i feel like we talked about it as like a void um as well and then diani bringing in this word loss and like that yes there's like a reconciliation um an attempt at reconciliation that um i feel like both of our work you know tries to address and i think that you know um mm. that you know sometimes I'm curious what you feel about this too. And I definitely want to like open things up to, for questions too. I know we don't have a whole lot of time left. So drop your questions in the Q and A. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm curious, Diani, how you feel about being um, viewed as, or talked about as like a, you know, like an activist or something like that, right? I think like, because a lot of our work deals with healing and reconciliation and um, really directly addresses, you know, systemic issues, um, um, you know, derived of, from colonization, from white supremacy, from capitalism, right? Like a lot of like, it, it just, we, we deal with it. We address mm -hmm. it very directly and with and unapologetically. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm, I, I don't know any other way to be as an artist. Right, like I don't, like I don't know what else I would make. Um, um, yeah, it's 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 like it's like that's what's there. That's like there's there's nothing else for me to talk about. And you know, hopefully, I will have said and you know created what I need to what I needed to say and or create. You know, in a couple of decades and maybe move on. Um, the only thing I can say now related to that loss is like I have dealt with this question of origin story and like you know like dealing with all that i don't know and what do i do what do I, how, how do i um create life nurture life um um develop legacy honor ancestry if i have no history if i have no you know if i if i don't know anything and so i i, I feel like i dealt with that in the relics of home series um and uh, I'm now more so like, you know, like swimming into the loss, swimming into the unknown um, through this idea of like futures um, and cultivating and depicting like possibilities in different futures um, and having conversations like this, right? Like where we can create, you know, those bridges of understanding. But, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'm, I'm curious, what, yeah, like, do you, I've, I've heard you, you know, like folks refer to you as an activist and, you know, things like that. I'm just curious, like what you feel about that, if you, yeah. Man, so you and I have had some private conversations on this topic. Um, we haven't had a ton of time to dig into it, but we've talked a little bit about it and it is, it's a really good thing to get into. Um, I don't have a straight answer. Other than the fact that I, I do recoil a bit because <clears throat> I am not on the front lines. Um, and I often am making that choice because I am sole financial provider for my family. <laughs> and I um, quite literally, you know, and as uh, this go, speaks back to our, our motherhood piece, and I'm not trying to make excuses because I know at times it is absolutely a necessity to be out in 
the public spaces in protests on the front line, you know, I, I know that's absolutely necessity and I admire deeply and hats off to folks that make those sacrifices because they're also family members, they're also mothers, they're also fathers, they're also relatives, they're also um, folks bringing home financial resources and all of that. But I, so I've thought about this a lot. <clears throat> um, and yet at the same time, I also do recognize that there are, we have different roles and there are different ways to do the work. You and I have the advantage of a public platform <clears throat> that comes with being an artist. So I believe that as human beings, the strongest communities come through when we're recognizing that we all have different gifts and different things to bring to the table. And I, I feel like we're, we're, it's something that we have to continue to actively learn and work towards recognizing that, that we can't all come equipped with the same gifts. We can't all come equipped with the same, um, yeah, gifts. I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. And, but, if what we can do is recognize that so-and-so has this, so-and-so has this, so-and-so has this, 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 right? Well, then when we bring all those things together, that's what creates a whole and, and healthy and working and operating community, right? You and I, our gifts are in the arts. <clears throat> with the arts comes the ability with, to have, to be able to speak to large audiences that often extend beyond our immediate networks. And so with that, our quote unquote activism comes through our ability to present conversations and critique, societal critique that hopefully in the way that you and I both operate, and I think that's why we um, so naturally gravitated towards each other is that uh, we very much, seek to create opportunity for conversations in our work that move towards healing that 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 recognize you know those the the flaws in our society the 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 realities of our history the pain the trauma and all of those things but then open up spaces that hopefully provide opportunity for connection and, and healing and how do we move forward? How do we move forward towards healthier models of coexisting and of celebrating one another? And, and, um, and I, <clears throat> so I think that is our role in the activism world. Um, I, and I, I, I struggle to use that word. I struggle to say it even out loud because I'm like, no, that's not me. That's not my, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not usually there um I'm supporting in other ways you know and and I don't want to go down some list of here's all the ways I support but like but my work I feel like in those spaces is this you know this this is it like cre creating exhibitions that people can walk into and um hopefully have a moment of critical thinking that asks them to reflect and asks them to think about, maybe you've learned something, what are you gonna do with that learning now? And how's it gonna maybe change the way that you interact with somebody towards hopefully a healthier model of interaction and, and recognizing uh, the value in, in all of us, right? And how do, we, how do we come together and recognize and celebrate differences and celebrate um, what we can bring to the table, right? Uh, <clears throat> and also at the same time, <laughs> I really want people to, I mean, I don't want it to sound all, all, all fluff and, and, and sugar because it's not, you know? I mean, they're tough conversations, they're hard conversations and I want people to be real about those conversations and I want them to dig in and think thoroughly about the history of this land base, you know, um, but towards a better goal, right? Towards a better end. 
Yeah. You know what, folks? Just like hold out for our podcast. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Deanna and I have been, yeah, Deanna and I have been playing with this idea for we just gonna do it. We're gonna have our podcast. So, you know, we can dig into all the all the topics. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yes. how do you okay? So I wanna I know we're almost done, right? Like I don't are there any questions or should we just keep going? I don't know, Freddie. Go. I think, yeah, <laughs> let's just um let's just keep going. And uh, okay, we'll, so, we'll, like you got five minutes. Let's try to wrap up right that's right. Up. I want to hear your response to the question, Jovan. Hmm. <laughs> I asked you so I wouldn't have to answer it. Don't you <laughs> understand that that is how I work by now? I don't know, Diana. Like the thing is that I ask you because I know in my mind that we're gonna probably have the same answer, but you're gonna say it better. <laughs> like that's what I ask you. <laughs> Okay, do you have anything to add? How about that? Child, no. No. Oh. Um, no, I will say, you know, um, agreed uh, to all of the above. And um, yeah, I, do, I, I think that, that, that you know, I like, mm, like, I don't want to like position myself as like, you know, like just a scaredy cat that runs away from all conflict, but like, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, um, like there's a, there, like in the middle, like there's a lot happening in Minneapolis and your girl now lives three and a half hours north of Minneapolis, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because yeah. I feel that same, and you know, it, it, it is interesting, like we had that project that interviewed our moms and they kind of like, um had these like similarities in their in their upbringing in their concerns you know in fears in you know spaces where they felt ridiculed etc and um i wonder if that like trickled down to like their mothering and 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 the way that we mother um and so like one of those things is like you and i are like fierce protectors of our babies you know mama bears mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. whatever it means to protect you know, like we will do that. It doesn't really matter if it means that we have to like, you know, you know, m move to Iceland, find a cave to live in and like, you know, <laughs> live on sticks and berries for the rest of our lives. Like if that's what it takes, then that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And it's really kind of like a no questions asked, like that's what's necessary kind of a thing. And so, you know, I think that the majority of the decisions that I make both artistically and um, as a human um, are centered around the protection of my two little black boys that are brilliant and fabulous and wonderful, but I know that the world will be scared of at some point for no good reason. So, um, so we, we out here with some land, you know, we don't be seeing nobody, you know what I mean? So like, so like, I cannot own that, the, the title of an activist that, it, that requires a level of, of bravery and sacrifice and like gumption that I don't have, but I can have these conversations and I can make um, hopefully compelling, you know, visual works and immersive spaces that um, that offer an additional um, uh, layer to the conversations mm -hmm. that that are so necessary. And yeah, maybe we need an expansion of the term, right? Mm -hmm. Like sub labels, because I really do think there's lots of different forms and roles right of 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 the work at large um and it it's gonna take work from many different spaces and many different angles it can't only be on the streets it has to be everywhere it has everywhere. to be everywhere in every role and 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 so but right now like hearing you talk about it, I'm just thinking to myself, well, that's because in our minds, we only like, we carry one definition. So perhaps we need an expansion of, of the term. And maybe it's episode exists and one. Haven't been introduced to it. I don't know. That will be but episode yeah, yeah, one of our podcast one. coming soon <laughs> to, to Spotify yeah. near you. To, I yeah. don't know how to do that works, but yeah. <laughs> the, I mean, yeah, the work happens in all different spaces. And I just, I mean, the, the video work that I'm doing now, it came from, I mean, thinking about uh, what the hell am I, what good am I doing wielding a paintbrush in my studio? You know, and how can I how can I address these these larger topics? How can I contribute? Like one single human being, how do I move the needle? And I can only do like we you know, and we had that's a 
we have to recognize that like we can't fix the problems as a singular person right but what was what can we singularly contribute and hopefully add to pile on you know contribute 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 everybody you know so that that's a a, a mass um um under it's getting late here uh Absolutely. so that it accrues mass right yeah. so that it accrues you know and and that's when we yeah it is enough to dive that for us as revolutionary this. thank you that's, that's yeah, what's up. i'm up on that one <laughs> I that. well i thank think you. this is a really great um point to to close on because yeah, yeah i mean i i think you know um, to Diani when you were speaking to you know, sort of bringing, bringing all those strengths together to form true community is something that, um, you know, our conversations that are happening now. And I think it is about, yeah, it's about calling in everybody at every level to, to really, to, to rethink the work they're doing and, and, and how, to, how to do it differently. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just looking, we had some great comments in here. Just you guys check out the chats. Um, so thank you everyone for being here and um, thank you to our fabulous panelists, um, the fabulous Jovan and the fabulous Diani, who continue to inspire thank me you, and hopefully inspire many others. And again, grateful to, to share this space and uh, look forward to um, the podcast and, I, it's <laughs> and, to, and, to, and to many more conversations with you two um, together. So grateful, grateful for, for you both. And thank you everyone for joining us. Really appreciate it. Great to see so many friends in the chat and um, yes. really appreciate your support, everybody. Okay, thank have you. a wonderful evening. And Good yeah, everyone. come by and see the show tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye, 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 ladies. Bye. Lots, of love, lots of love. Good Guys, night. Good night, night, everybody. Good night.